Veterans are among the most honored and respected individuals in many Native American communities. They lead the grand entry at powwows. Honor songs are composed and sung for them. In many communities, ceremonies are held for service members when they leave home and again when they return. Many tribes have warrior societies, such as the Kiowa Black Leggings Warrior Society, shown here, which holds an annual ceremony to honor Kiowa veterans and helps them to re-enter their community after their service. Yet this tradition of service and sacrifice remains unknown to most Americans. Congress has directed the National Museum of the American Indian to create a National Native American Veterans Memorial to honor the outstanding service of American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian veterans and to raise public awareness of this rich tradition of service. This past weekend, on September 21st, we held a ceremonial groundbreaking in Washington for the memorial. We plan to open it with a public dedication on Veterans Day of next year, 2020. So I'll begin by giving a brief overview of the history of Native American military service, and then I'll talk about our plans and our process to create the National Native American Veterans Memorial. Native Americans have an extraordinary history of serving honorably and in great numbers in the United States Armed Forces. American Indians have served in every major military conflict since the Revolutionary War, serving throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries before all Native Americans were finally granted citizenship with the 1924 Indian Citizenship Act and full voting rights in 1957. While exact numbers are difficult to confirm, it's believed that in the 20th century, Native Americans served in greater numbers per capita than any other ethnic group. Approximately 9 to 12,000 Native American men served in World War I, and 10,000 Native women joined the Red Cross. During World War II, over 44,000 American Indians served, including nearly 800 women. This was about 12.5% of the total population at the time, and a much higher percentage of the number of eligible men out of a total population of only about 350,000. In June of 1944, 500 Native Americans and Canadian First Nation citizens participated in the D-Day invasion at Normandy, helping to bring the war to a close. They included Charles Norman Shea, shown here, Penobscot, now 95, who served as a medic at Omaha Beach and for the past several years has returned there every year in uh, commemoration of D-Day. Since World War II, Alaska Natives and Native Hawaiians have served in great numbers and with distinction as well. And this photograph shows a group of Alaska Native men being sworn into the Alaska Territorial Guard during World War II. The story of the Code Talkers is perhaps the best known story of Native American military service. The military's practice of employing Native languages to transmit sensitive messages in world, began in World War I with a group of 15 Choctaw men known as a telephone squad, and it eventually included speakers of 10 Native languages. Building on the success of this program, in World War II it was expanded to include about 25 tribes of whom the 420 Navajo code talkers are the best known. Using the, language, the languages that many of them had been punished for speaking as children in government-run boarding schools and sometimes creating complex codes, the code talkers played a crucial role in bringing the conflict to an end. Service continued at a high rate during the Korean War with about 10,000 Native Americans serving and the Vietnam War in which 42,000 or approximately one quarter of those eligible served. So both of these men, Woodrow Wilson Keeble and Mitchell Red Cloud Jr. were awarded posthumously the Congressional Medal of Honor for their service during the Korean War. And Donna Loring, who served in the Vietnam War, went on to serve as the Penobscot Nation's police chief afterward. This service has continued in peacetime and in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. These photographs were taken at a powwow that was held near Fallujah during the Iraq War. Sergeant Deborah Mooney of the 120th Engineer Combat Battalion of Okmulgee, Oklahoma, 
organized the powwow at Al Takadam Air, ba Air Base to relieve the homesickness that many of the native members of her unit were feeling. So their family sent the clothing and other items that were needed for the powwow, and a drum was made using a steel oil drum and canvas from a cot. Following the powwow, Sergeant Mooney arranged for many of these items to be shipped to the National Museum of the American Indian, where they became part of the museum's collection. Today, there are more than 31,000 American Indian and Alaska Native men and women on active duty, and more than 133,000 veterans identify as American Indian or Alaska Native. And uh, as you can see on the map, Native veterans are in every state in the country, including nearly 2,000 in the state of Illinois as of a few years ago. This legacy of service, though, is not well known or appreciated by the American public, who might wonder why Native Americans would choose to put their lives at risk to defend a country that has betrayed its promises to them, taken their land, and suppressed their cultures. In 1994, in recognition of Native Americans' long, proud, and distinguished tradition of service in the armed forces of the United States, Senators Daniel Inouye and Daniel Akaka of Hawaii and John McCain of Arizona, all veterans themselves, sponsored the Native American Veterans Memorial Establishment Act. The legislation authorized the National Museum of the American Indian to create a memorial to give, quoting the legislation, all Americans the opportunity to learn of the proud and distinguished, I'm sorry, proud and courageous tradition of service of Native Americans in the armed forces of the United States. The law, which passed 10 years before the museum opened on the mall in 2004, was amended in 2013 to correct some flaws that had prevented the project from moving forward, and we were able to begin our work. The memorial will be located on the grounds of the museum on the National Mall in Washington. As we began our work on the memorial, we knew that we needed to seek guidance from those whom the memorial would honor. We began by forming an advisory committee of about 30 American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian veterans, tribal leaders, and family members to share their insights and experience and to assist us with outreach. And it includes men and women from communities across the country, representing all branches and several eras of service from the Korean War to the present, it also includes a gold, gold star mother and a gold star father. The insights and guidance that they've contributed based on their own experiences and their discussions with other veterans and service members have been invaluable. Working with the advisory committee, we spent about 18 months from 2015 to 2017 consulting with Native American veterans, active duty service members, tribal leaders, and community and family members. We held 35 consultations in 16 states and the District of Columbia, and we met with about 1,200 people total to share plans for the memorial and gather their recommendations. During the consultations, veterans and family members told stories of service, sharing both the pride and the pain that these bring them. Veterans also discussed their reasons for serving. Foremost among these was an inherited sense of responsibility to protect the homeland, family, community, and way of life. One veteran remarked that the land he and his community live on holds their great-great-grandparents' bones, and he said that they're committed to defending it. These conversations were essential to getting a sense of what Native American veterans and their families want to see in the memorial, what are the values that it must embody, and what the experience of visiting the memorial should be. There were several themes and wishes that we heard again and again in these conversations, and these formed the basis for the design goals for the memorial. So we heard, um, and I'll s summarize what's shown here, um, we heard, first of all, confirmation for something that we knew, which is that the memorial must be inclusive, honoring all American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian veterans, men and women, from all branches and all eras of service from the Revolutionary War to the present and going forward. And we heard that it should honor the long tradition of service and the inherited responsibility to protect. We heard a desire for the memorial to also acknowledge the sacrifices made by the families of those who serve. We heard that the memorial should reflect Native American spirituality, again in a very inclusive way. And there was a desire for the experience of visiting the memorial to be a contemplative and healing one, 
whether for veterans who served decades ago, for families remembering those, remembering those lost during their service, or for young service members just returning home. There is a sense that the memorial should not be about war, but about those who have served. As the authorizing legislation directed, we opened an international competition on Veterans Day of 2018 to select a design for the memorial. Stage one, which was open and blind, meaning the jury didn't know who had submitted the proposals until after they selected the finalists, drew 120 proposals. From the five finalist stage two proposals, the jury unanimously selected a design, design concept, which was announced in June of last year. And I think I said that the design competition opened on Veterans Day of 2018, it was actually 2017. We had a distinguished jury representing artists, architects and designers, cultural experts and veterans. They approached their task with thoughtfulness and care and a deep sense of responsibility to the veterans, the Native American veterans whom the memorial will honor. At the end of two days of discussion and deliberation, they agreed that the design concept that best accomplished what was laid out in the design goals for the memorial was the one submitted by Harvey Pratt. Harvey Pratt, the designer, is a member of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes of Oklahoma, and he's a Southern Cheyenne peace chief. In addition to being an artist, he's a Marine Corps Vietnam veteran and a recently retired forensic artist. Pratt's design for the memorial, which he titled Warrior's Circle of Honor, creates an enclosed circular gathering space with a large stainless steel circle sitting atop a low carved stone drum form. Water flows continuously outward from the center of the drum. There's a circular seating area with four points of entry at the cardinal directions and a surrounding circular walking path known as the Path of Harmony so that the design is respectful of different cultural practices regarding the appropriate direction from which to enter the space. The seals of the five branches of the armed services will be on a nearby wall. There are four vertical spears or lances where visitors may leave prayer ties, and there's a place at the base of the circle where a fire can be lit on ceremonial occasions. The memorial will be situated within the woodland landscape to the east of the museum, overlooking the wetlands. A meandering pathway, or walkway known as the Path of Life, will lead visitors through the trees to the memorial and allow them time to prepare themselves as they approach it. During our consultations, we heard a strong preference ex expressed for a location in a quieter place on the grounds of the museum, rather than the most prominent visible location on Independence Avenue. The trees surrounding the memorial and the water nearby will help to separate it from the noise and traffic of the city. Pratt's design for the memorial is simple and powerful, timeless and inclusive. It reflects the ideas of a sacred circle, of the cycles of time and life, and of individual veterans' experiences and stories as part of a collective, unified experience. There's a sense of connectivity and continuity. The jury felt that the circle was relevant to all Native cultures in the shape of a drum, of circles for dance, storytelling, and prayer. It incorporates the elements of fire, representing strength, courage, endurance, and comfort, water, signifying purification, prayer, and cleansing, earth, which provides people with all they need, and the wind that will carry the scents and sounds of the wetlands and carry the prayers and memories of visitors skyward. It's open, yet it creates an intimate space for gathering and for reflection or prayer. One of the biggest challenges that we faced in building the memorial was finding a design that would be truly inclusive and representative of and meaningful to all Native American veterans without being so abstract that it would not be meaningful. And we feel that Pratt's design accomplishes this really beautifully. He brought his own experience as a veteran and as a tribal citizen who's, ex who's lived this tradition of service to his thinking about a design for the memorial. As we look forward to the opening of the memorial, we're planning a number of related programs and projects. We have a, a traveling exhibition titled Patriot Nations, which traces the history of Native American military service and uh, talks a little bit about the Veterans Memorial as well. Thanks to generous support from the Sam Manuel Band of Mission Indians, we have six copies of this that are traveling across the country and we're able to make them available at no charge to um, tribal museums, cultural centers, libraries, and other venues. 
We've also begun working closely with the Library of Congress Veterans History Project to collect, preserve, and make accessible the oral histories of Native American veterans. The Veterans History Project has been collecting American veteran stories since 2000, but the stories of Native American veterans are not yet well represented there. So we're working together on outreach and conducting training sessions to teach family and community members how to record and submit veteran stories so that they can become part of the national collection in the American Folklife Center. We're also planning public programs and articles in the museum's magazine, as well as a book and a short film that will accompany the opening of the memorial next year. We'll begin construction on the memorial very soon, and we're looking forward to a, the, the dedication of the memorial on Veterans Day of 2020. We're anticipating a great gathering of Native veterans and their families on the National Mall. The National Native American Veterans Memorial will be a welcoming space for gathering, reflection, healing, and remembrance, a moving and lasting tribute to those who have given so much of themselves for their country. Thank you.